I think it's the 20th to 23rd. But his wife's cup would say it's the same number. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's get started. There's not so many of us this time, so let's see this one gets One started. thing you might want to know, there's a lot of us. There's a, a live broadcast going on. It's a live broadcast this time. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying it out. I've never done it before, but we're going to see how it goes today. All right. Nobody's watching right now. No criminals, DOE cracks. Okay. We need a barometer over here <laughs> of the number. Yeah. So let, let's get started. Um, welcome, Call Fusion 101, um, Introduction to Access Eat Flesh and Pawns Experiment. In connection with the uh, Flesh and Pawns Experiment, there's a lot of other things that happen. Um, tritium has been seen, low level nuclear radiation has been seen. Um, Elemental anomalies have been seen. We're going to be focusing mostly on uh, excess heat in the next few days. Um, Mitchell doesn't like this, but I feel compelled to have a warning in connection with this uh, presentation. Um, people working in the field have noticed difficulties. Um, their career has been impacted, their funding has been impacted, their ability to publish has been impacted. So if you're thinking about working in the field, uh, don't do so lightly. Um, this, this remains, even in 2015, a pretty dangerous field uh, to be in. Why a new course? Well, lots of reasons. Um, people are close to having technologies that one would recently considered commercializing at this point. Uh, so we need some understanding in order to move the field forward and to move towards commercialization. Um, we need to understand things better in order to evaluate claims that we made. Um, over the years, uh, I've been contacted quite a few times by folks wanting to move technology forward and work on commercialization in the same you recommend people that we could hire. So you know, there's no courses in the field, nobody's trained up, except for the few people working in the field. So we need a course to begin thinking about training workers. The area's controversial issues aren't settled, and there's a lack of acceptance by the social community. At MIT in the classroom, I, I know that controversial issues get dealt with as a matter of course. Um, Areas of controversial confusion, not so much. Um, objectives of the course. Well, we're interested in why it's important. A big issue that's going to face us during the next few days is to separate the issues of known science from new science. For cold fusion to work at all, there has to be some new physics uh, involved. On the other hand, we're going to be, uh, you'll be impressed by how much mileage you can, you can make on the problem by taking advantage of known science and known physics. Um, there's going to be big implications for condensed matter physics and nuclear physics based on the experimental results that we're going to talk about. So, let's get started. And the place to start in this day and age, of course, has to be Wikipedia. Um, according to the internet, cold fusion is a hypothetical type of nuclear reaction. Hypothetical, not experimental, but hypothetical. Um, which can operate near room temperature. Um, hot fusion, conventional fusion study in nuclear physics, nuclear engineering, science and engineering. 
requires much higher temperatures. Um, no current theoretical model um, as we will see. Um, Wikipedia is not done. Um, if you oh, a quick question: Will we be able to have these slides uh, during the course or or after? So, um, if, if you email me, I'll okay. send you a draft of it. I wasn't planning on posting. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Interruptions are okay. Um, so the article's long and talks about a lot of things and changes from year to year. But we have it on the best of internet authority. That in the flesh and bones experiment, the rate of inferred excess heat generation in excess power is in the range of 10 to 20 percent of the input power, and that this could not reliably be replicated by most researchers. We've also got a plug for Nate Lewis, who figured out that the excess heat in flesh and bones original paper is not even measured. That's, that's pretty damning. Um, Shanahan working publishing from an environmental energy lab reports tells us that there's a lot of positive uh, results reported, but the big headache is the signal-to-noise ratio. That um, the signals are small, the noise is large, and cold fusion calorimetry is at or near uh, limits of accuracy and precision. So, this would give you reason to doubt um, positive results that have been reported. Anyway, the takeaway message from this, of course, the obvious takeaway message is if you can't trust Wikipedia, then who can you trust? Um, these days, everybody already knows about cold fusion. They all know about Fleisch and Pond's experiment. In fact, um, a few years ago, my, my wife was uh, teaching um, at the public school level, and um, one of the packets that was um, made available was one that talked about cold fusion. Now, cold fusion was an uh, example that could be used to illustrate how bad science works. Um, so, cold fusion as a field has been discredited. Um, if you work in the field, if you take an interest in it, other science will take advantage of you. Um, and this gives us reasons why we have to spend some time to think about it. When I get to the takeaway message person presentation, this is time for me to pause and catch my breath and to entertain questions if there's thoughts or comments or questions. Anyway, if you could, if you could back up one slide. The top sentence there talks about um, a high signal to noise ratio. That's actually a good thing. Uh, I think I think that's a typo. I think okay. Yeah, that, that was my only question then. Yeah, I, we can move on. Oh no, I, I have I have typos. I'd like to get them fixed. Okay. If you see typos, point them out. Other comments or thoughts or questions? Okay, let's think a little bit about the experiment. Here are Fleischmann bonds, and here is the cell. That's uh, attracted so much um, controversy. If we look inside the cell, we see a cathode, palladium cathode, and see a platinum anode wrapped around. Um, we see uh, inlets for um, air, for connectors, uh, gas comes out. In electrolysis, you separate hydrogen and oxygen from water. In this case, it's heavy water. Heavy water with working uh, with oxide. Um, I think the. Okay, well, um, in this case, I, I was looking to see if this was a doer in the original experiment. Um, and I, I don't remember. Um, later on, it works for me. So here's an example from the 1990 publication of a temperature uh, excess. So at this point, so there's a long starting at t equals zero. This, this is time in millions of seconds. So loading is occurring. Um, at some point, the 
cut the current's initially low for reasons which we'll be talking about a little bit later on. Currents raised up to a higher level. And at some point um, in this experiment, a thermal effect was seen. So the temperature increases. Temperature in this case increases by a maximum of 27 degrees centigrade. And then goes on. Um, I guess the thing to note is that even back in the early days of cold fusion in the experiments of flash and ponds, the effects were large effects. Namely, Shanahan tells us that the um, signal to noise ratio is, is basically poor, but there's lots of noise. The signals are very small. In this case, the noise looks to be pretty small, 